and use it since Facebook shut me down last time. But happy Friday! Um, this bright light is killing me. Anyways, happy Friday. It's December 2nd. And uh, just a little let you know, December 2nd, hi everyone, it's my mother's birthday. Yeah, it's when these fine women um, of the world blessed this earth. So happy birthday, mom. I'm not sure if you're watching yet, but I'll be sure to sprinkle that in all podcast long. It's also my Uncle Joe and my Aunt Concha's uh, birthday as well. So happy birthday to you guys which is interesting. So, Auntie uh, Concha and Uncle Joe, they're from the same family. They're both on my dad's side. Isn't that crazy? Like, two kids born on the same day? So I guess if you backtrack however many days, like, whatever day that is, that is a busy day for my grandparents. Kinda crazy, kinda crazy. Uh, so, um, I haven't been around for two weeks, so I've got a lot to talk about. <laughs> Lots of parties, um, <clears throat> drunk co-workers, yes, that's lots of fun. Uh, talk to you about my Thanksgiving. <clears throat> and also talk about how, um, I don't know, I've lost my phone a couple times in the last two weeks. I don't know how I do it, but I'm gonna kinda let you know. Um, hey Cliff. Okay, so I have my eyes on the road. Cliff, like this is the road. Like you are in my view of the road. It's kind of strange but um, I'm driving safely with Pablo and I'm running a little bit late so it's possible there may be a little car pullage this trip <laughs> uh, anyway uh, by the way it says on the little thing that it's only 375 um, or it says the carpool ticket starts at 375 so why is mine 490 is it time of day? I mean, it wasn't like there was any traffic. It wasn't like we were going 80 miles an hour. So just curious why it's 490 and uh, that little sign says 375. Looking for a discount, people. Come on, Highway Patrol. Hook me up. All right, so first, um, there was a event that I went to a couple weeks ago that was fabulous. It's called Young Women's Honors and it airs on the CW on December 19th. You'll be seeing me post about it. Um, so watch the CW uh, December 19th. Gina Rodriguez is hosting it and it was such a beautiful event. Um, I, I, I'm just like, I'm floored. It's going to be an event that we're going to talk about in 25 years. So I'll keep you guys posted on that. But let's talk about parties. Let's talk about parties with free alcohol, shall we? So tell me if this has ever happened to you. I know we talked about um, company parties, which I still haven't had a company party, so I'm waiting for that juice. <laughs> but uh, when you go to a party and there's free alcohol, like you just know something bad's gonna happen, right? So there was, um, no names, but there was a coworker that, um, I don't know, the guy's probably only 80 pounds wet. I mean, very, very tiny, tiny, tiny guy. So the amount of alcohol that you have to drink to get this cute little man uh, drunk is probably not a lot, right? I mean, I wouldn't suspect it would be too much. So everything starts out where um, everyone's kind of, you know, uh, friendly and it's like, oh, hey, and everyone's kind of very happy at this event. And then you start to see the eyes slowly drop in a lot of people. But um, this particular one, uh, you ever have that guy that has the cup? Hold on, let me show you. Let's say he has his drink and they're talking with their drink like this. They're like, so did you see what Jenny did? Oh my God. Literally his rosé completely fell out of his cup and then as he's walking around he I think he thought this was straight and it's flopping all over the place uh, cracked us up and of course I always feel bad for guys like that because there's always those people that I don't think these are nice people when they start snapchatting or taking pictures because like that's embarrassing right and I mean why would you want to embarrass someone or why would you want to exploit 
someone that, um, you know, is in a state that they cannot control. So I always hate that when like, you know, when people draw, I mean, it's funny, right? Like in college, when you drew on your buddy, like you drew like a big old dick on his face because he was passed out on the couch. Ha ha, funny, funny. We're grown ass adults. No one needs their social media page um, poured with like pictures of them acting ridiculous. Um, but it was quite funny. I mean, I was kind of like, man, I need to take you outside. I did tell this person, I said, listen, I need you to stand up straight for 45 minutes. Just stand up straight. I don't care how drunk you are. Just lean up against the wall and stand up straight. Look normal. In 45 minutes, then you can be ridiculous. Well, that didn't work. They ended up taking him outside, which was, you know, it was sad. But there's nothing sadder than the day after. <laughs> so we get in on Monday morning and he's like, oh. he wanted to die. Of course, he texts me all day on Sunday. But he wanted to die because the worst thing is when you go to these parties and it's the next morning and you look at all your coworkers and some of your coworkers are like, or they're like, woo girl, I heard about you this weekend. That's my favorite. But I did tell him, you know, it wasn't that bad. It was just bad because I happened to be um, kind of monitoring him or babysitting, shall I say, him. So he, wasn't that bad to people that matter in the sense of bosses or CEOs. However, all of us know. And of course, now there's evidence. So that was kind of the funny part. Um, and you know, I can't blame him. I told him it happens to all of us. I mean, I try to pretend like I'm all this like, you know, squeaky clean chick. Um, I won't tell you what family members to reach out to and get dirt on me because they won't. Right, bro? Right? But I have also had those days back in my 20s, because um, I'm still in my 20s, back in my early 20s, where, um, I don't know, has this ever happened to you? You ever wake up naked in bed and wondering why you're naked in bed? Yeah, that's happened. I know it's happened to you guys, so you guys can just say yes already or start liking it. Yeah, well, I woke up one morning and um, was like, I, I, I like woke up, oh, where am I? And I had this sheet on me. Hold on guys, doing it. Doing the carpool. Oh. Um, woke up, looked under the sheet, noticed there was no clothes on me. I was like, ah! and then you kind of, you do like a check on your lady parts and you kind of like, did I have sex last night? Like this has happened a couple times, but you're like, wait, did that just happen? No, okay, Phew. all right, I didn't have sex. Okay, there's no one next to me. Um, I have no clothes on. Um, then you start looking for those dick pics I was talking about. So you start looking, did anyone draw on you? You start looking at your butt. You go into the mirror and you're like, okay, do I look okay? Did I break something? And I remember I look around, I'm like, I'm at my brother's house. I'm like, ah, I'm at my brother's house. Ah! So I remember going, Andrew! And I hear him and um, I think it was his girlfriend at the time or his, um, his wife at the time or I forget I forget what they were at that time. But anyhow, I'm like, Andrew! And he comes out and I'm like hiding in my sheet. I'm like, what happened? And he's like, oh, you want to know what happened? He's like, okay. So we were all in the pool and you thought that you were drowning. And I was like, how can I be drowning? Your your pool's like, I think the deepest part is like five feet or like three feet. How could I be drowning? I'm five freaking nine. And he's like, exactly. <laughs> so there I am in the pool. And you know, I'm like, it's up to here, whatever. And I'm like, I'm drowning, someone help me. And my brother says to me, hold on, I gotta, my brother says to me, uh, stand up. And of course I stand up in the waters like to hear. It was quite embarrassing, but um, he says, so then we had to take you, you know, we wanted to wash you off. Not like I made a mess of myself, but I guess girls stripped me naked and then threw me in the shower, which by the way, must've been a great conversation with me, right? Threw me in the shower and then um, they threw me in bed and, and I was in bed. I don't know what time it was. I'm gonna pretend like it was three in the morning. It was probably 9 p.m. 
be a little wildcat back in the days. So my coworker, if you're watching this, your morning after does not beat a percent of my morning afters. My morning afters have got to be so many of you guys out there. So, uh, and I'm okay with saying that because, you know, I don't do that now, but I'm not going to pretend I was Virgin Mary, but anyhow, that's, um, oh man, that's my story of waking up and being naked and not knowing why I was naked. Scary. Um, so what did I, oh, there was something else I wanted to tell you about that night. Oh, by the way, um, this holiday season, Moet has these cute little champagne bottles. They're like this big. They're like little, uh, what do they call them? They're not halvesies. They're like, oh, I forget what the name is, but it's just a little guy. A couple of those people and uh, strange things happen. That's basically what that Saturday was about. So I'm going to tell my coworker to stay away from the champagne this holiday season. All right, so to bring it on a serious note, because, I mean, who wants to talk about being naked in bed, right? <laughs> All right, so that um, same weekend, oh, by the way, Pablo says hi, everyone. Um, that same weekend was the weekend that I joined the Watts Bears, me and TJ, and we went down to Watts and passed out uh, meals to the homeless. I haven't done this in a few years, and I forgot how special it was. This was such an amazing experience. So it was a rainy day, which rainy day in LA means traffic tenfold. It's a Sunday. It's an afternoon. Shouldn't be that bad. People don't know how to drive. Like it, it could be sprinkling and they're like, ah, stop. And then they like, it's just terrible. It's like, why don't you just slow down, put your freaking wipers on and use your blinker and then you won't get hit. That's what I'm saying. So anyhow, uh, we go down there and it's raining and, um, I'm just talking to, um, James, and um, who's one of the officers of the LAPD that puts this on, uh, and he said um, uh, there wasn't a really big turnout because it was raining, and you know the homeless are staying, whatever in their in their homes, like you know their tents or underneath the freeway, or wherever they're not going to go walking in the rain, and they're cold. So he's like, we're going to go drive around and we're going to go hand them out. And I was like, this is so exciting. So um, we fill up this van um, with um, like, I don't know, let's say 40, maybe 50, but let's say 40 meals. And we um, go to these different areas through Watts. And now I'm born in um, LA, lived in San Diego. I know there's, you know, bad areas. Um, when I used to go to USC, I used to go drive to certain areas and go, like, teach kids that were in elementary school, and they were kind of, like, really bad, bad stuff. So, um, but I don't really know how bad it is down there. You just hear about it, and we all think, oh, South Central, it's so bad. Honestly, if you're, you drive down there, it's, it's not that bad. But then again, I was with two LAPD officers, so <laughs> I felt super safe. Um, but we went through this area called, and I might have this wrong, called Nickerson Gardens. Holy crap, guys. Like, we were in a war zone. It was, it's kind of, like, just to take a, a note back from the home, I'll tell you the, about the Thanksgiving dinner in a second. But, like, here I'm in, in L.A., having a great time. And just a few miles from our city, there is a freaking war war going on. I know that there's terrorist attacks and wars going on in other countries, but what's happening with the gangs in these certain areas, it's it's really, it's insane and it's not that far from us and it's just, I don't I don't have a solution. I just it's crazy. So what the Watts Bears do for these kids to keep them out of the gangs and to show them about teamwork and loyalty and those things, that's what's cool. That's what's going to help, keep, hopefully, keep them out of these gangs. But um, I was freaking nervous driving down there. And here I am, you know, like taking selfies. Like, I, yeah, very crazy. So anyhow, we go down to these areas and it's, um, you know, it's like when you go get gas and you see like that little tent, there's homeless in there. So we go up and we kind of go like, hello, we have meals, we have Thanksgiving meals, you know, um, we'd like to offer you them. And 
some people would come out and they were just so freaking gracious. They were just like, oh my, thank you so much. One gal, she just was so touched. And we were just like, happy Thanksgiving. And the smile on her face, the smile on everyone else's face, it was just, it was so special. And you know, a lot of them, they choose to be homeless. You know, they don't, you know, some of them have the opportunity to get housing, but you know, a lot of it's drug addiction and they, they can't, they can't help themselves. So if we can do anything to help, hold on, is that a cop? No, that's not a cop. <laughs> um, if we can do anything to help them, you know, just that's what we did. So we went out underneath this other freeway and found some other homeless. And we found this one gal, her name is Queen. She was a spicy girl. And one of her, like, I'm gonna call them roommates. One of her roommates kind of in her area was so sweet. She came up to us and she took the meals and she's like, thank you so much. We're like, yeah, of course, happy Thanksgiving. Um, hope you enjoy it. And it was a really good meal. I mean, there was every fixing you could think of in there. And she says, hold on a second, I wanna get you something. And it was me, TJ, the two officers, Gooseby and Holloman, and then it was um, uh, my buddy Scoggin, right? And so the gal comes back and she gives me and this girl these two hand, I should have brought it, these two hand knit beanies, like like legit beanies that maybe you would wear like in Wisconsin because they were so thick and warm. And I'm thinking, what is this woman, like you need this. And I said, oh no, no, it's okay. Um, you know, and without saying like, you need this more than me, right? I don't want to say that comment. I, you know, here, you, you take it. Like, uh, you know, I'm good. I don't even wear beanies. Like ah, bad hat hair, I don't want it. Um, and she says, if you're gonna share your blessings with me, I wanna share my blessings with you. And I was just like, okay. And you know, you don't wanna tear up. But I was just like, thank you. And it just like touched my freaking heart. So it was, you know, just, it's that type of human connection that I think we definitely miss out on. And that was like, that just touched me. I mean, I wish I could do that every day. I wish I could touch people like that every day. Um, so anyhow, I uh, hope you guys can do that one day, but it gets better. So then we go to these, um, uh, this other freeway thing and I call this guy two string BB King. So it's this guy and he's got, you know, his setup and everything. And it's kind of, I'm fascinating with these guys. They're very resourceful and he's got his guitar. This is like the junkiest guitar you've ever seen. It only has two strings. That's right only two strings and he's um you know you kind of never know if these people are inebriated or what and he's like I'm gonna sing you a song it was less words than that but that's what came out basically and he starts tuning it now I grew up in a music family with my um, stepdad playing guitar a lot and I know and even my brother and my dad but my um, when Gary my stepdad would you know tune his guitar what is there, five strings? And you know, there's all these different things you do. And this guy was doing that and I'm thinking, oh my God, he's lost it. Like he has to be on some drug and he thinks that he's tuning this guitar. This is gonna sound like shit. And I'm gonna have to smile and clap just to be nice. Wonderful, Lauren. <laughs> but it, what is it called? Nicker String Gardens. Oh yeah, thanks James. Um, and so I'm like, great, I'm gonna have to totally lie and fake to this guy that he's fantastic. So then he goes and he starts playing. And it actually is on key and it sounds pretty damn good. And then he's singing and it's this like that classic kind of like blues beat, like um, I can't even, I can't even replicate it for you. But it's just that classic when you're just, you know, like B.B. King would have come up with like that blues and you just make up words as you go along and it was amazing. And he's doing it, and he, he kept looking up at us, and he's like, I know it doesn't, this is what he said, this, I'm going to uh, um, translate it for you, because this isn't exactly what he said, but he said, uh, pretty good for only two strings, and I'm like, hell yeah, buddy, and I wanted to video it, but like, I don't, you know, these people, like, again, you don't want to exploit people, I really wanted to video it, but here he is playing a blues song for us folks on this rainy Sunday, making us happy, sharing his blessings on a two-string guitar. So two-string BB King is down there in Watts, and um, 
I'm sure you'd appreciate any love this Christmas. So just letting you guys know. It was uh, it was pretty it was pretty cool. So we um, what was kind of amazing was like we couldn't give food away too. There were some people that were like, oh no, I'm good. And I was like, um, I mean, I'm you know have a home. I've got some money in the bank, and I'm fed. But if you offer me a plate of food, I'm going to eat it. Like I, I'm. I, I can't ever say no to free food. I mean, there was ham in there. I, maybe I should have opened it and been like, sir, do you know there's ham like right in this plate? Uh, but there, you know, there's some people, maybe they just don't want a handout. So fine, fine with me. But we did end up giving out all of those. And um, I posted up a picture with the guys on my Instagram if you guys want to check it out. And I think I did it on Facebook because of course I post on every platform possible. Um, that was just that was so cool and I, I hope there's some more if anyone knows of any other things that we can do um, that would be great I know the Watts Bears are also doing a toy drive so if you guys want to send any um, unwrapped uh, toys the, they're gonna have the kids the Watts Bears the the students at the school the the players of the football team down in Watts they're gonna have them go deliver them to the children at Children's Hospital um, it's not Children's Hospital LA. I think it's, oh gosh, it's some saint. It's Saint something or other. Saint Lauren, Laura. It's a saint. All these churches are all named after saints. So I'll figure it out. I'll put it in the thing below. But unmarked toys would be really cool for these kids um, down there at the hospital. And then if anyone has any other events, I'm down. I'm able. I've got two hands, two legs. Um, I'm a chatty Kathy, so if you need me to spark up a room, let me know. I'll go visit anywho. Uh, children, old people, or the elderly, the pro uh, I think that's politically correct, the elderly, homeless, whatever. Um, so yeah, St. Uh, St. Francis Hospital in Linwood. That's where you need to send your um, un, what is it? unwrapped uh, toys. Uh, James, make sure you send me um, where they can drop them off. Inlet, if it is um, St. Francis, just tell me where I can have people drop them off. Hopefully we can get a lot. Um, so yeah, so that's my, that was my um, Thanksgiving Sunday. Now for Thanksgiving, I had the best time. Went down to San Diego, you guys. And San Diego, I mean, this is where you go to die and retire. This is where I grew up most of my life. I was born here in LA. All my aunts and uncles are here, but my mom and dad moved us down to San Diego. It's the best place ever. So I went to my dad's house and had a nice feast. Only had one plate though, which was kind of shocking. Um, for my family that's out there listening, I, um, I'm i known to eat. Now, I'm not a fat girl, and that just didn't come out right. I'm not a big girl, and I've never really been big because I played sports, but I can put down, one Thanksgiving I put down, it was either 12 or 17 tamales. Yeah. <sighs> Not good. So this Thanksgiving, one plate. One plate only. I was quite impressed. Uh, but it was a great time. And then um, the next uh, the next day, which was Friday, my dad is addicted to volleyball. Um, has to play volleyball. And so we went down to the beach. And I went down with him and his wife, Jody, And we played beach ball Thanksgiving Day, Friday, um, in San Diego. And I'm sure there's other people that are like, giving me the middle finger because it's probably they're under 10 feet of snow but it was pretty damn amazing um so it was a good holiday and thanksgiving and um i'm sorry to not have like super important points to talk to you guys about but just kind of wrapping you up on what's been going on in my life um so let's bring it down to this next issue when is it okay to leave 800 no when is it okay to leave nine hundred dollars on or in a cab like have you ever left nine hundred dollars in a cab have you ever left nine hundred dollars at a bar have you ever left nine hundred dollars at your friend's house probably not let's actually go a thousand thousand dollars you ever just lose a thousand dollars maybe at the casino well i lost a thousand dollars twice apparently I don't actually think that these phones are worth anything because I've lost in the last 14 days my phone twice the first time 
I'm not gonna tell you whose house it was, but we went to a party at um, uh, an actor's house and great time. Didn't even get that turned up. Like honestly, did not get that turned up. But of course, um, wake up the next morning, where's my phone? Can't find my phone. I'm looking everywhere for it. I'm calling I'm like, great, I'm gonna have to cancel it. Word of mouth comes around and they're like, a friend calls and says, hey, I called up your phone and some dude answered it and was like, who's this? And if you knew this other person, this is, it'd be even funnier, but um, I was like, oh my God. He's like, I thought that maybe you went home with him and that you ditched TJ and stayed the night. And I'm like, oh my God, how embarrassing. And I was like, no, no, I'm here with TJ. It's just, I left my phone at his house. And he's like, mm-hmm, so embarrassing. So I had to go pick up my phone later that day. But it was like one of those things where one, you lose your phone, but then too many of the wrong people call your phone. And then another guy answers your phone. You ever have someone that is, if like if I called TJ's phone and a girl picked up, I'd be like, uh, hello, yeah. I'm looking for uh, cheating bastard TJ. Yeah, is he there? Um, hi, yeah, this is his accountant. He just went to the restroom. Um, can I help you? Like, <laughs> that would be like my reaction. Sometimes people just can't pick up their phone. So anyhow, when this friend picked up my phone, there was two important people that were kind of questioning why my phone was left over there. So embarrassing, another embarrassing morning after story, right? Hey guys, I just saw my mom um, joined. Hi mom, happy birthday, happy birthday. Sorry, I would play you a happy birthday song, but Facebook would probably pull it off because it writes and whatever. So I'll give you a call later and sing you happy birthday. Um, but back to the phone issue. So it was quite liberating um, when you don't have a phone on you. Um, I am one of those people that check my phone all the time. Um, never when I'm driving never when I'm driving um, and I you know check my snapchat my Instagram my emails emails are most important though emails and text and it was so weird it was like 12 hours of not having to do that and it tripped me out I you know you get this first anxiety and then it's kind of freeing like no one can find you nothing's that important if it's that important they'll call like your significant other but if no one's calling him, like, all things are good. So it's kind of like, I I wish I took more phone breaks. But, I mean, it's just impossible. Um, and I just can't do it. So the second time, I lost my phone. But this was a legit time. This was not lost my phone and found it. This is lost my phone. Or maybe it was stolen. So me and TJ go out with friends on Saturday night. And we take an Uber. So we take this Uber, again, not even that turned up at this point. We take an Uber, I tell him immediately, babe, I don't have my phone on me. Like, door closes, we go to this establishment, I don't have my phone. Oh, let me go run after the Uber, Uber's gone. So you can't, like, I don't, like, it didn't, they didn't send him, like, the email right away that, you know, here's your Uber driver's number, so, like, he had to wait a couple minutes contacts Uber. They're like, oh, we'll have the driver check. Driver check says, oh, there's no phone. But if you do find my phone on your phone while it's on, you can track it anywhere. You can't track it when it's off. Now I had 50% battery. That's a lot of battery on these new phones. So the guy had to have seen it and then turned it off and freaking stole it. So mad. It's like, again, leaving $1,000 in the cab. And then I had a friend, she's like, well, you should just put it in a purse. Well, that's the logical idea, right? But again, addicted me, if I'm on my phone in a cab, I'm not gonna put it in my purse. They're like, oh, you should put a string on it. I'm not gonna put like a 1990s, you know, um, uh, like grunge chain on my phone, although it's a great idea, but still. Um, Oh, hey, TJ. Oh, it was Lyft, not Uber. Well, maybe that's the problem, babe. It wasn't Uber. It was Lyft. Who are these Lyft drivers? <sighs> Hi, Mom. 
Um, oh, mom, you're gonna go play racquetball? You're not gonna watch my podcast? Okay, you're the best mom ever. Okay, I love you, go work out. I'll talk to you later. Um, but still, just, it was like leaving $1,000 in the cab. It just sucked. Oh my God, I was so upset. So what did I have to do? Well, I had to go buy a new phone. Could I buy a new phone right away? No. What I had to go do was go to um, AT&T and I found an old uh, 4S phone that I had. How the heck did we deal with a 4S phone? This thing was freaking slow. Of course it didn't, the cloud doesn't sync up to the 4S because it's so outdated that none of my contacts would go through. But the phone was so archaic that some of the apps wouldn't go on there. It was terrible. It was only good for calling and texting. Which then brings me to, how do we ever deal with flip phones? How did we ever deal with pagers? And then the pay phones and then a house phone. It's like, it's so crazy how we've progressed. And now when we go back to like the olden days, I can't handle. So um, I had to go buy a new phone on Monday. And um, that's what I'm here for. So you guys are... Uh, being brought to you by my new, nice, new, rose gold iPhone 6. Ugh, I hate paying Apple so much money. It's just so frustrating. So anyhow, that was the phone issue. Um, hopefully I don't lose it this holiday season, although I was looking at records. This time of year, I always seem to lose my phone. Last year, lost my phone this same time. So for Christmas, maybe if someone wants to buy me an extra phone, because guess what, this next, this one, I have Apple Care though. So if I lose it, it's not gonna be that bad. So how many of you out there are listening to Christmas songs? Yeah, yeah, I love the season. Like me, I listen to Christmas songs in June. I put in Mariah Carey's Christmas because it's the best Christmas album ever, besides the one with Bing Crosby, Dean Martin, and, um, Sammy Davidson, is that it? Anyhow, that's also the second best. But Mariah Carey's Christmas is amazing. Um, and I think it's like, our, I don't know what the channel is um, in LA, because I can't find it lately, but I know the country station 105.1 plays Christmas. Um, I love Christmas music, it puts you in the best mood. They're super obnoxious, they get stuck in your head. In fact, what song shall I get stuck in my coworkers' so uh, heads today? Last week I did um, the Frozen Let It Go song and it worked. I sang it in the break room, sang it in the um, copy room, and then I waited about an hour and I heard one of the sides of uh, the other side of the company. Someone was singing it, so it was perfect. So I'm curious what song I shall stick in their head. We shall see. Um, okay, so. I reviewed, oh, um, I didn't really see any movies in the movie theater, it was just really busy, but we did rent on Redbox, Hell or High Water. Anyone seen it yet? I'll give you time to comment. So Hell or High Water, $1.24, right? Or $1.25 at, um, at Redbox. Yeah, that was not worth $1.25, so I'm so glad that, was it in the theaters? I or was it just straight to DVD? What was the deal with that? Um, it's gotten like a lot of like traction. Like I think someone was saying like, oh, doesn't it, isn't it going up for awards? You, the only award it should go up for is great casting, meaning great casting to get these guys all on the same um, screen. And then the um, director of photography, it was shot beautifully. Like each shot was so pretty, but it was like they were trying to do No Country for Old Men meets, I don't know, like a heist movie that just didn't go well. You know what it was? It was like No Country for Old Men meets, is it the Mississippi Grind that uh, Ryan Reynolds and, um, uh, is it Brian Mendelsohn film? It was like those two together. Um, so it had Chris Pine, who I like when Chris Pine does this kind of, um, raw, um, you know, this, not this pretty boy character. And he's funny. He's, he's, I, he's very likable. Um, and then Ben Foster plays his brother, Ben Foster. That guy's a chameleon. He, he is so good. He is so good. And then there's Jeff Bridges who, who doesn't love Jeff Bridges. 
but Jeff Bridges is playing his version of Jeff Bridges as a cop in the South and then there was a lot of likeness to um, Tommy Lee Jones character in No Country for Old Men so I don't know I just I didn't dig it um, so if you guys loved it out there great I'm so glad you have great taste in movies <laughs> I'm just kidding um, but I don't know there was just the pacing was weird the um, it was like drawn out um, it could have been so it could have been so much better it was almost like a first time director that was like a DP and was all about beauty shots like he was a director it was, it was just very strange so if you guys go out and see it um, again I think it may be for free on Netflix so if you can get it for free great but you're never gonna get those hour and 40 minutes back so choose your time wisely I don't know maybe put Christmas decorations while it's on I don't know it's like it's not that great but you know what was interesting so Chris Pine plays um, this kind of like gritty kind of character um, still was kind of a little bit soft but um Chris Evans in the Iceman kind of did play a similar character but basically stripped his pretty boyness to play this serial killer uh, um, serial killer um, like hitman I don't know if anyone saw the Iceman it was with Michael Shannon it's amazing it's a true story um, I loved that film but it was really cool to see Chris Evans in that not be Captain America and be a pansy and actually be a freaking good actor and I like that so um, if that's what Chris Pine was trying to do in Hell or High Water great buddy um, maybe you should just edit just edit your parts into a reel and show people but that film was film was garbage basically in the first three minutes I'm like I'm bored and yet I still kept watching so what other movies shall I watch this weekend? Because uh, I got the Raider game at one o'clock on Saturday, or no, on Sunday. <sighs> I can't think, I'm sorry. This traffic, like, I can't think when I'm in traffic. Raider games on Sunday at one. Um, and uh, maybe I'll go to the movies after, maybe I'll go on Saturday. Maybe I'll go to Bed Bath & Beyond. I don't know if I'll have time. But let me know. Um, what I should go see and I can review it for you guys next Friday. Um, I know, oh, relationship advice, the favorite part of the show. So, funny things and serious things, people. And also, by the way, my relationship advice is over all of my history of being on this earth and dating and not dating and just observing other people nothing to do with current situations or people that just just go lightly with me okay so one thing I've been noticing lately is um, some people have been really good at doing chivalrous actions opening the door for people pulling out a seat I saw like a movie where like the guy pulled out the seat for the girl and I thought holy shit excuse me I don't know when's the last time like or when guys do that right like I haven't seen that lately I was like, holy man, that's amazing. Opening the door, letting the woman go first, letting her be first in line. Like these little things, we we keep an eye on this, guys. We really do. Um, I've been like, I remember I think I got coffee the other day and I just saw this guy like do little things for his woman. And for all you guys that are like, I ain't doing that out there. Like that guy's whooped. Uh, excuse me, not whooped. Um, appreciative and also probably has really amazing parents that taught him good manners so um, if for you guys that are doing these great things bravo say to your parents thank you mom for growing me up correctly and thank you pop for showing me how to treat a woman for you guys that don't open up doors for women or um, pull out the chair for her or let her how, what is it? Let her do anything first. She's first in line. You're supposed to protect her, right? Those little things. Tell your mom that you failed. She was probably a great mom and you probably had a great dad, but just say, parents, you failed. I suck. I didn't listen to you. I'm a horrible human being. Try it. So yeah, you guys, a little bit goes a long way. Opening the doors. Oh, I saw this guy do this the other day. It was so cute. He opened like the car door, like they were both walking out 
And I don't know, we are in 2016. A lot of people can open up their own doors, but he opened her car door for her to get in. And I was just like, oh my gosh, does that still happen? It was like the coolest thing ever. Um, I, I don't know. I always love that. Like that just, you know, it's like, I think, I think us ladies, the only time we get that is in valet, right? And then get paid to do that or anyhow. So chivalry, let's just work on those little tiny things. And us women will do the same. We will absolutely do the same. We'll do whatever we have to do, right? Um, maybe we make the bed. Maybe you're the guy that makes the bed. Let's talk about that. There's another thing. You're living with a significant other, a man or a woman, don't care what you are. If I guarantee if you're not the person that makes the bed, but you make the bed, stop the, hold the phone, you will get kudos. I'm just telling you, it's the most simplest thing ever. Making a bed. People love it. Makes them feel. And we're back. Sorry, connection was lost. Make the bed. Makes people feel like they're in a hotel. Makes them feel loved. Makes them feel like you give a whole crap. So, relationship advice today is do a little extra. Make the bed. Clean the dish. Whatever it is, people, you will have a happier and healthier relationship. And this is not just for you loved ones that are boning each other on the weekends. This also is for coworkers. Hey guys, you see some trash on the ground in the break room, pick it up. You leave your nasty oatmeal bowl on the counter for someone else to clean? I don't know, it wasn't their bowl with oatmeal. Maybe you should clean it out, right? Right? Oh my God, oh shit, there's two cop cars. Hold on. Oh dear, oh dear. Sorry guys. Those were two CHP officers. Thank God they're on their way. Maybe they're late to work. Ah, just got a little hot in here. All right, guys. Well, I'm at work and um, we're almost to work and I got to go, but I had a great time with you. A little recap. I want all of you to... Oh, hi, Jess. Oh, Taylor's saying hi. Hi, Taylor. Pablo says hi, too. He just can't wave his arms because his arms are like, they look like chicken fingers. Uh, but hey, Tay, I miss you, Mwah! for all you guys that are like, who the heck are you talking to? Um, that's my nephew, and he is two and a half, I think, and he's super cute, and he loves me, and that's all that matters, so there. Uh, but you guys, seriously, first number one, you guys have any charities or any like cool things to do this holiday season, let me know about them. I want to get involved. It just... It makes me feel better about myself. I want to make other people feel better about themselves. I always want to leave you and anyone else in my life feeling a little bit happier about their day. So I'm all about sharing. Oh, also for um, you out there, I love reading to kids. I also clearly love dressing up in weird costumes. So if anyone has anything like, if I need to go visit like a cancer unit and dress up in a costume or read stories, totally down. I also do voices. Not very good voices, but they'll understand. They'll get it. Um, and then let me know what movies or um, maybe TV shows I should binge watch this weekend. I know I'm going to watch Goliath um, because that's on my radar and I still haven't seen Night Manager, which I hear is amazing. So um, I will see you guys um, next week. Comment below. Send me some love. Be sure to follow me on Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, you're obviously over on Facebook. What else am I on? Oh, go to subscribe.